This is Nick Mangold of the New York Jets, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the FantasyJocks.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thursday, Thursday edition, February 9th, 2017, the 2017 season is nearly upon us, uh, well, preseason yeah. is, uh, yeah. what, next week, the week after, Jason was, uh, gave me a look during the intro there, because the hi-hat oh. of the intro reminded him <laughs> of the, uh, the, what, what up with that, Ooh. Saturday Night Live skit, when he ah. it starts going, so that reminds me. We uh, need to get a I drop need, yes, related I, to that. Yes, I need to get that so we can just all of a sudden hit it. We've got. <laughs> oh man, that's good. If it happens right in the middle of talking, you'll get the eyeballs from me. It's gonna be vibrations. <laughs> all right, we'll welcome. Vibrations. <laughs> if, if, if those that don't know what we're talking about, which is probably most of you, check it out. But uh, welcome to the show. Going to be a great one. We got a mailbag. Got a lot of news. Everything. You know, something's happening every day right now. We had a couple of players uh, dropped yesterday, and it's going to be an adventurous free agency period, an adventurous free agency period. But mm. we're answering a lot of questions today, commish questions, league questions, dynasty keeper, everything you got. We put the word out there. Um, very important. You know, I, I tweeted yesterday, what should I make Jason eat next? Ooh. Mm. It's because been, it's been a good week. Jason's been punished this week for losing a bet. Week day one, it was eggplant. Day two, well, day one turned into nothing. Well, right, because you didn't really eat the eggplant. <laughs> no, even though I gave you a chance to race Mike in eating eggplant. Yeah, for those who are wondering, like, wait, why are we not seeing photographs and videos of Mike eating the terrible foods as well? Well, the the eggplant was so good at being bad that Andy had to set up a race of, okay, from here on till the end of, uh, end of the end lunch. End of the lunch. Who can eat the most? Yes. If whoever eats the most is off for the week, I accepted the challenge reluctantly. Yeah, yeah we, we, we both accepted. I went for the game in the game, and I got you out of it, Mike, because I didn't take one more bite. <laughs> I was like, but, yeah, that's fine. But you were still in my head. So, so Mike is off the hook for the rest of the week. Yes. Although – I one would argue the eggplant was a week's worth of punishment in one meal. It was for me. Day two, what did you have? Day two, Jason. Oh, day two, I had a delicious salad, arugula, with extra beets, horrendous beets in it, and it, they were nauseating. <laughs> yeah, you didn't like them. And then yesterday was the black bean burger with a side of beans, beans, and in <laughs> these beans were every kind of bean you could imagine: kidney beans, lima beans, navy beans, navy beans. 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 Which, to be fair, I so, mean, there are people who enjoy these foods. They're just not for us. We're going to jump into the quick question, but I want to I want to give you some of the Foot Clan's answers here. I asked what Jason should eat today, day four. A lot of tofu showing uh, up. Ew. Tofu. Uh, some <laughs> compare that to eating a melted crayon, which eh, I figure Jason might like. So I'm I'm hesitant. Now, in uh, a lot of this loot fish, no, I don't yeah. think I can no. find any loot fish. Uh, that's lutefisk. Oh, really? Lutefisk. You do. Are you aware what lutefisk is? No, I am not. <laughs> okay, if you thought the eggplant was rough, lutefisk. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, just uh, to summarize, it's basically a type of fish, and then you put it in a jar of vinegar and you let it disintegrate. Wow! And then you eat it. That is ludicrous. We've got yes. We've it's... got uncooked frozen egos without syrup. I have eaten those. <laughs> <laughs> I am not shocked. <laughs> So. Something super spicy. I've done that with him before. We've got the general answer of Arby's. <laughs> uh, an entire plate of ketchup. I think a yeah, human foot. What? Um, we're, hmm. we're going to the max, gentlemen. We, we can't stretch the, the boundaries of the laws of America. Well, I could be, you know, I could already be dead. I, I believe you, there's I, still I, a I still law. I think you're not allowed to be <laughs> a cannibal. You still can't still if we're not allowed to eat horse. I'm pretty confident we're not allowed to eat listen, human. Listen, All off, right. officer, he lost a bet. <laughs> he lost a bet. He has to eat this foot. All right, quick question of the day comes in from at Man Mowr on Twitter. How right. soon is too soon 
to start discussing next season with casual fantasy players? Oh, the casual players. And that's a good question because uh, you can. You, you can know. burn out a casual, yeah. a casual mm. fan. I will say this. If you're asking this question, I'm going to hear a vibration. Uh, if, you, if you're hearing, if you're asking the question of how soon should I really get into it with, uh, how, how soon should I ask the question with a casual fan, that means that you are aware that they might not uh, enjoy They the might not respond positively to your early February 2017 discussion. In which case, I am going to say you're fine to talk about it now because you are... Obviously, an astute gentleman. Uh, or you, a gentle lady. That is true. Man myth mower could be what, a woman. What um, is the... Sidetrack. What is the equivalent of gentleman? There's not... A, I don't think you just... Gentleman? It's gentlemen and, that's what, gentlemen and I don't ladies. Think ladies. Ladies, yeah, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Just, All right. So, maybe... I'm just asking... May, a, you're right. Friend. You're right. I apologize. Maybe man myth mower is a lady. So... <laughs> Uh, lady or gentleman. <laughs> My point is, start talking about it now and use discretion. Don't go over the top. Don't make it 100% of your conversation. But, you know, plant those seeds. Your job yeah. your job is to convert that casual player to exactly. be like you. So that's when you say, you know what? Have you seen those uh, those Fournette video? Check this Fournette video out. Oh, oh look, at, look at these highlights. Show them this- the Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, look at Dalvin My Cook. My goodness, if you don't get... A little bit of perspiration over the forehead when you're watching Dalvin <laughs> Cook run. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Going to dive into the news and notes. Before I do that, remind you, on Twitter, you can follow us at the FF Ballers. We're on YouTube. Show up to the shows over there. And uh, very exciting. You know, we're going to have the 2017 Ultimate Draft Kit coming out this offseason. And this thing is jam-packed. Uh, overwhelmingly positive response last year. And we're only going to add to it this year. So, some exciting announcements. You're darn too oh, we're man. adding. We it's, can't make the announcement yet, but there is a very, very exciting addition to the Ultimate Draft Kit. Several. 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 They're amazing. I'm, yeah. so, I'm so happy. That's We're working on it hard right now. So so stay tuned. That'll probably hit the website here for pre-order very soon, which will be early bird pricing, the lowest you can get it. But pay attention to that. Exciting news. And uh, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right. Surprising. The Falcons have hired Steve Sarkeesian from uh, Alabama to be their offensive coordinator. I believe he was a quarterback's coach at one point in the NFL. Otherwise, he's known for, uh, I don't know, some bad behavior. And some yeah, I was say, he's, he's not <laughs> – what I know him for is some not off, good. some off-field issues, which hopefully he's gotten those those things taken care of. I think it was a very interesting hire. The hire has to be – I, I think it is really related to the Pete Carroll coaching tree in, in the sense that you, you've got Dan Quinn coming from that type of a, an atmosphere, that culture that's that's very specific to how Pete Carroll runs things. You have Sarkeesian, who was with Carroll all those years in USC, and so you've kind of got what Dan Quinn is trying to build. You can see that when Dan Quinn doesn't have exactly what he wants, he's going to get rid of it. He fired the... The defensive coordinator, who I think was doing a pretty darn good job, their defense was uh, getting better and better. They were they were getting better, but we talked about this. I guess we're jumping a little bit of the news, but Andy and I were talking about this. It reminded me of us of very much of the uh, two thousand two thousand eight Cardinals, where Clancy is that Clancy our? Pendergast was the defensive coordinator. The Cardinals went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and he was fired immediately after the Super yes. Bowl, despite having a kind of. The, the similar fast defenses, maybe not as disciplined, maybe not as talented, but getting better. I think they needed to take a next step with the defensive coordinator. Yeah, I think Here, it, it seems like a knee jerk reaction to the Super Bowl to fire the defensive coordinator. But it, to me, it's you look at the whole body of work, and clearly Quinn thinks that someone else can solidify that unit. And obviously, Shanahan left and went to San Francisco for that uh, rebuilding project, and they needed a replace. The offensive coordinator. Quinn has already said that the offense is not going to change. And one of the things people need to understand about Matt Ryan in this past season is that one of the things Kyle Shanahan did wasn't Kyle Shanahan so much. It was the freedom for Matt Ryan to call his own plays and make adjustments at the line of scrimmage. And so something like that isn't changing. And people should recognize the fact that, you know, if Matt Ryan in two-minute offenses is calling his own plays, 
and that freedom is going to be availed to him again, you're not going to see a, a, a change very much. So um, we'll see what happens. But Dan Quinn has come out and said that the offense isn't going to change. I'm sure there will be twists and turns. But uh, any thoughts on that other than the yeah. new the news? <clears throat> Uh, I, I will just throw out there is going to be change because it's a different human running every single aspect of your offense. Or in is it in, in practice? I agree with you that the offense is still going to be good. Matt Ryan is still going to be able to call the plays. They're still going to have amazing running backs and, and a great pass catching core. Could we be giving Kyle Shanahan too much credit? Because this offense year one with Kyle Shanahan wasn't this machine. This year, you had Taylor Gabriel involved. You had the ascension of Tevin Coleman. You had the stability of Alex Mack. Are we giving Kyle Shannon too much credit for that offense? Because no. it hasn't always been not, not roses. To yeah, I, I, I would, you, well, you had have, much better pieces this year. But well, you but have it takes the one, time the to get year. into a really – I mean, that was a, that was a complex offense, always moving things around. Uh, so if this was the only body of work we had from Kyle Shanahan, then I can agree with that. But we have seen him from – in, in a bunch of different teams, bring a high-powered offense to the field. So, to me, Shanahan, is a, I think he's a great offensive coach. Well, speaking of Shanahan, he's going to be the offensive coordinator for the 49ers. They're not bringing on an outside offensive coordinator. I think he'll have a couple of assistants helping him. He but better. He will be calling the plays. It's, there's a lot on his plate. Yeah, I think it's a dumb move. I, uh, w after just saying how great Kyle Shanahan is. Yeah, I'm confused now. Well, the, the reason here is because... There's too much. He's a first-time head coach who now has to do all of the job of an offensive coordinator plus the other stuff that he like just Chip thinks Kelly? that he's going <laughs> to be able to just do. He's never had to deal with the ownership and, and the behind-the-scenes stuff that a head coach has to deal with. And so I think I would have preferred, hey, bring in someone, you know, bring in uh, LaFleur, bring in, uh, you know, someone to come in and take an offensive coordinator role. You still call the plays. There's plenty of coaches out there that call their offensive plays. They still have an offensive coordinator to right. help with the workload. And and so a first-time head coach doing this, eh, it's it's going to be tough sledding with uh, very poor offensive weapons. Yeah, that's, I just agree with the workload. Let's speculate here. Jason Lockenfora says the Jets are a possibility for Jay Cutler. Hmm. I find this to be the comedic desire of my heart <laughs> because I would like Jay Cutler, Brandon Marshall, and Matt Forte to all play together on another team. I forgot team. about the Forte connection. <laughs> oh, yeah. funny. Oh, yeah. Because it's, the Bears, it's the Bears were, East. The yeah. Bears were so good. I know. When they had well, Matt Forte. Well, look, Jake if you're Cutler. looking to finish third in your division, you've got the team. Yeah. Hey, I just, I'm going uh, I'm going Jason Toot Toot here. I think it was like week eight of, the, of last year's season when I was talking about Jay Cuddy smoking him up over there at the New York Jets. Well, it has to be good news for Brandon Marshall if that happens. Great. It has yes. great news. Here comes 300 targets, Brandon Locked Marshall. and loaded. I know. I don't I'll, know what you can do with them, but they're coming. I will regret my dynasty trade of Brandon Marshall. Uh, well, maybe. 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 Brandon, um, we'll see. But, yeah, Marshall's a lot of talk these days. <laughs> and every day before it. Uh, were, were either of you, <laughs> let, let me just ask, were either of you worried, and I assume you both saw the David Johnson video. The pool jump? The pool jump. Did you see this, Andy? I did not. So he did the the thing where you're in, you know, whatever it is, three or four I mean, feet I've, of water. I've done that a few times. So and I you're know in the pool and you jump out of the pool. It was showing out, like, how his rehab is coming. But this came yesterday on the heels of Mike and I talking about, I think you were there too, Andy, where we were like, you know what we're not going to believe this year we should have had in our <laughs> 10 things to remember <laughs> is we're not going to believe all the workout videos. All the Eddie Lacy's and the Brandon Marshall running on the treadmill and the and Jamal, Jamal Charles. Charles. Yeah, this video looks pretty good. It looks great. <laughs> but it, this came like I saw it about 30 minutes after we had the conversation of I'm not believing. So I was like, Here, uh oh, I, I'm watching it again. Nice. Oh, you got the audio. <laughs> in. Yeah, I got the audio in on that one. Um, he's looking good. He's looking mighty fine. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's not buying into a workout no. video. He's not rehabbing from something devastating, but that's nice to see. Uh, I'll probably watch it for a couple hours later. Yep. Uh, Broncos coach Vance Joseph says he's committing to a quarterback competition between Paxton Lynch and Trevor Simeon. And Tony Romo. Uh, and <laughs> did you say Antonio Romo? No, he, he whispered it at the end. I'll tell you what, Demarius Thomas is rolling his eyes. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. tough. That's tough. Browns released Josh McCown. He wants to keep playing. Uh, I of think he wants he, to play for all 32 teams. Of course he teams. does. We know what Josh McCown wants. Yeah. He, His big, family has not yet gotten the bonus 
of insurance from dying on the field. So he's going to continue. You to keep tr- saying that. I, I mean, the guy just goes out. He's 38 years old. Josh McCown, I out, saw him is, play it at Sun Devil Stadium. He is a warrior. I mean, this he, was a long time ago. I, I feel like if he gets the ball, the next snap, if he gets to play another snap at NFL quarterback, he's going to take it. And he's going to get the snap, and he's going to run directly at, like, Von Miller and be like, what? try it! Not, not before ripping his helmet off. Well, sure. What was the Varsity Blues parody movie? Um, Ooh. Do you know what I'm talking Ooh. about? First of all, you're hanging yourself out to drive. You're calling me out for a pop oh, culture okay. movie reference. Well, it's 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 making, you know, riffing on Varsity Blues. but And then there's the, the, the tiny guy, Marty, and they put him in at wide receiver, even though the coach doesn't want to, and then he – uh. Gets hit and split into two. <laughs> oh no, haven't haven't seen that. No, okay. Sounds <laughs> all right. Big news: Le'Veon Bell is seeking oh, a Marty. Le'Veon Bell is seeking a third opinion on whether he needs groin surgery. This is not good. One doctor said yes. One doctor said no. And so now we've got the third opinion. You know, we've talked about this before. The past couple of years, you've had a reason to draft Le'Veon Bell late, later. I, you know, Couple we love Le'Veon Bell. I don't know if people will be fooled again, though. Right. Brandon Marshall, uh, speaking about him earlier, he said he's not planning on leaving the Jets and that they've given him no indication they're releasing him. So to add to the Jay Cutler uh, talk about the Jets, Brandon Marshall's probably not going anywhere. Deshaun Jackson said he plans to test the market. We know we've heard Philly as a possible return home, but Jackson can land someplace and make a big impact. He it's could. just not going to be the kind of impact I adore for my fantasy team, which is kind of the hot, cold, maybe injured impact that he's been making. But he's a super talented guy. He could mean more to the fantasy implications of a quarterback. I'm going to throw out San Francisco. Sure. They have. You think they want to put Torrey and Deshaun well, Jackson just, on both sides? I don't know. If, one, I don't know if they're going to hold on to Torrey Smith. Right. Two, they just they have they need weapons. I mean, Jeremy Curley was their leading receiver. They need someone who can make a play, and Kyle Shanahan's. I think Deshaun will go wherever what the, we did with Taylor Gabriel. He'll go where the money is. Yes. Oh yeah. Certainly. Oh Deshaun Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't blame him, but yeah, and and <laughs> obviously the how the free agent chips are going to fall here uh, this offseason is going to make a huge difference for fantasy. I believe are we are is Tuesday our free agency preview show? As of right now, it is. So we're going to get into all the speculations on where everyone will go. Who all is open for free agency? That's going to be an important show. Make sure not to miss. Packers have released James Starks and Sam Shields. They saved $9 million releasing Shields. Uh, He was dealing with the concussions all of last year, went on IR because of it. James Starks had been the longtime backup. Now you have a situation where they've come out and they said, Ty Montgomery's going to be a running back. He's going to be involved in the the running game. My estimation is that, look, it's it's a two, two options for Green Bay, right? It's, Resign Eddie Lacy and pair him with Montgomery or let Eddie Lacy go and you're going to see Green Bay take a, uh, a running back in the first four rounds. I yeah, think there's pair a, him with Montgomery. I think there's a decent possibility that Eddie Lacy just comes back on a one year to Green Bay. Yeah. And so. uh, Jason, I don't know if you have the link to it, but the the Sam Shields was that an Instagram post he oh, put up? Yes. Um, where Sam Shields is uh, lost all control of the hashtag. Oh, man. If you if you look at his post where he was saying goodbye after being released, he has about 20 hashtags in there. And they go through the gamut of, like, I'm mad, I ain't mad. Yeah, he goes through the seven process, the, the yeah, seven the steps of Seven grief. steps were all <laughs> in that list. And at the beginning, I'm thinking, oh, he's not, he's not walking away from the game. He's saying, I'm still getting better. Or, I'm sorry, hashtag, I'm still getting better. Um, and then eventually it's like, <laughs> hashtag, it, it was good while it lasted or something. It's like, I have no idea if he's going to play. I hope for his health, considering the concussion problems he's had, that he walks away. He's had a great career. Uh, wish him the best wherever he goes. But with James Starks gone, I think this is probably the end of his value in fantasy. I can't imagine him signing anywhere no. and being no, he's relevant. Done. He's done. All right, before we get into the mailbag, Mike, you can warm up your... <coughs> Bumblebee, Bumblebee. <laughs> I want to thank Pristine Auction for sporting today's show. For sporting? Supporting today's show. <laughs> sponsoring today's show. Making this possible. Look, we love Pristine Auction. I was on there today. If you're getting hyped about those rookies, there's a Fournette jersey right on the homepage in the daily auctions. There's a Bo Jackson signed 
helmet, an Antonio Brown framed jersey, a Dak Prescott full-size autographed helmet. Everything on Pristine Auction is 100% authentic. These are uh, This is a great company. This is a growing company that uh, sources the absolute best autographed sports memorabilia from your favorite team. And the, the cool thing about this is you don't have to just – there are weekly auctions on there. Um, there's a marketplace on there. But there are daily auctions. So you can go on every day and see some new uh, amazing gear. We love them. We've outfitted our whole new studio with a ton of pristine auction gear because it's super affordable. So check them out. That's pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. Let them know the fantasy – Footballers sent you. There's currently a, a full-sized Cowboys helmet signed by Emmett, Aikman, and Irvin. That's bananas. Oh, I've got an uncle that would that buy, buy that right up, so you better hurry. Oh. Mailbag. Mailbag! All right, we're jumping into the mailbag, answering listener questions. You can submit your question by going to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. And uh, clicking the questions tab, you can also dial us on our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Leave us a voicemail question. We'll get into it on a future show. We'll and start here. Say, and shout out to those who joined us. for We were, were on Twitch yesterday playing some Overwatch, answering some fantasy football questions. Just having a digital party. Yeah, you know what's funny is people on there were saying, and, and of course th this makes sense, right, we, because we've got the platform – with this show, we have a lot of a uh, lot of listeners. Thank you, Foot Clan. But over there, they're like, "Wow, it's a lot easier to get my question <laughs> answered." Because it, you know, if you the, jump on, if you're an early adopter of Twitch, yeah, and you want a fantasy football question answered, Twitch.tv/slash the FF Ballers. Yep. All right. First question in our mailbag today comes from Jared in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's a "Who should I keep?" question. Oh, this is fun. I love this is fun. Questions. Hey guys, I can keep three players. Is A.J. Green worth a first-round pick? Is Lamar Miller worth a second-round pick? He also managed to pick up Gronk, Keenan Allen, and Deion Lewis, all from waivers. Oh, my goodness. Who should I keep? What? Obviously, Well, that the changes the whole equation. I'd rather have a free player and get my first and second-round draft pick based on Gronk, Keenan, and Deion. It's between Gronk and Keenan Allen for me. I'll probably just take the free Gronk and keep my first and second round pick. Yeah, assuming that the rule set here is that they get, you know, whatever the stupid rule is, you get the last <laughs> the last pick in your draft for a waiver. Um I would I would prefer Gronk over Keenan Allen. Both are injury prone guys. One is the difference maker of difference makers at the position. I still have my first and second, so I would go Gronk. You can I can keep three, so is it possible oh, that... I'm sorry. Yeah, I it wasn't that. just pick I'm one. I'm sorry. I thought there was one. All right, I can keep three players. Gronk, Keenan Allen, Lamar Miller for me. It would... Man. Sure. Yeah, I, I would go with that, too. Keenan Allen gives me enough at wide receiver to make me want to grab the running back with the tight end. Uh, so I'd go, I would go Gronk, Keenan, and A.J. Green. All right. Keeper question <clears throat> from Wes in Springfield, Ohio. Who should I keep next year? Zeke in the first, Lev in the second. Devontae Adams in the 16th oh, round. Man. It is a one-keeper PPR league. He says he won both his leagues this Woo! year, thanks to the show. Oh, well nice. done there, Wes. All right, that's a, this is a tough one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Le'Veon Bell in the second round. Yeah, this is the stud versus the extreme value of Devontae Adams. If it's Zeke for a one or Lev Bell for a second, it's – that's pretty uh, easy. As of right now, who knows? Maybe doctor number three comes back and says, I need to replace all of your groin, Le'Veon Bell. So that could just torch his value. Uh, but I got to lean Le'Veon Bell in the second. I got to take the ultimate difference maker at running back. Yeah, and I'm going to differ here. Um, not in the pick, really? but in saying it's difficult. I think this is super easy. I think it's Le'Veon Bell. Um, I, I mean, you got the best player who should be going number one off the board. Well, that, just saying, in the, second the, round. the groin surgery of we don't know what that looks like yet. Y all right, I will grant you that it is early, and if he's not playing football, <laughs> then I would rather not have him. <laughs> if he's playing football, you're all yeah, in. If I'm football, right. yes. He's and we don't even know what team he's going to be on. That is technically oh, accurate. On. No, it's accurate because listen. They already said he's they're going to franchise him. No, I've got I've got a grandmaster. I know this to be true of you know 
Look, there is. Uh, we found out that the GM of the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah, might Kevin, or might not Kevin Colbert be playing uh, in a dynasty league where he has the 101 <laughs> pick. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> if he lets if he lets Lev Bell go <laughs> and drafts a good running back like a Leonard Fournette or uh, Dalvin Cook, that's he's got a great draft pick. Can you imagine? That is fu- <laughs> And just in case the joke is not seen, this is not actually any kind of real news. We are making this up, but I we were joking about. I just want the because Lev Bell is a free agent, and their system is so good for running backs. Not to take anything away from Lev Bell, but D'Angelo Williams. If for some reason a rookie, if we want another Zeke, where it's like, oh, he went to the perfect team. If they could draft one of those top guys, and and this really all comes down to I have the one on one pick in our dynasty draft, and I want I want a Lev Bell. All right, <laughs> Andy is befuddled. Michael in Toronto has a keeper question. Oh. LaShawn McCoy or A.J. Green in a standard league? Ooh, Who would you rather here keep? Here you go, shady haters. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you two. Why? What? Because you, you, th- you both have been burying LaShawn McCoy How early. How dare what you? What are you talking about? That is- You're saying he's not a top five guy. That- what is going on? Where did we say that? Somebody's having, like, dreams. Yeah, you had no, a dream. No, no, We can go to the tapes. You, go ahead. If I said he's not a top five guy, maybe there were five guys I liked more, and then he's six. I love Shady. I loved okay. him last year. We loved him last year. I, I well, have yes, no idea. How. Mike, you got a timeout. Yeah, you wait. We got to uh-uh. get Brooks on the on the tape and and see if he can hey, find Brooks, anything. That's... Brooks, uh, have you heard me and Jason disparage Lashawn McCoy in any capacity? In the slightest, like in even the, a do you teeny remember bit. The, uh, little hair it's of it. It's been happening. Uh, he's shaking his head. No. Yeah. He's shaking nope. his head. It's Ain't been happening. happening. Well, Mike, you you got to deal with your issues. We'll get you an appointment with somebody. Um, so, LaShawn McCoy or AJ Green? I would take LaShawn McCoy. Me, I would as well, especially <laughs> in a standard league. <laughs> All right, draft question for I would hater. take AJ Green. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'll take Shady. Jo- goodness, that was something out of nothing. Joel in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In what round would you draft Rob Gronkowski if it's a PPR keeper league? Where are you comfortable with Gronk? Where are you excited about Gronk? And where will he go? He'll probably end up going in the second round. I would be comfortable taking him in the third round. I'd be excited in the fourth, but that's just never going to happen. I would be very excited in the third round. I would be comfortable taking him in the second round. And yeah. I will uh, not take him in the first. Yeah, his. I mean, he's tough to gauge right now because – of just all the injuries and all the surgeries that he's had to have. I'll be honest. If I'm in the third round and he's on the board, there's a strong chance. Like, I, I'll i bet you it's 55% that I'm not taking him because there's wow. a lot of players I like that might be there that I, I would rather have a stud running back or wide receiver over Gronk. It's a, it's a tough case to say you're getting a stud at either of those positions in the third round. Would it not be? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you can make the argument that obviously in the third, the guys that are dropping to there have question marks. But if you want to make that argument, I don't know how we could say there's no question marks with Gronk, who as often as he's been great, has been not playing for your fantasy. The only caveat would be the question marks with Gronk are health. And if he doesn't have them, he's the number one. Sure. The question marks with those other guys aren't they might be the number one. So where as of right now, Jason, are you comfortable taking Jordan Reed? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I, I think really when it comes to Reed, that's going to be playing the ADP and seeing where he goes. I think he's worth, you know, that fourth round. So but Gron- if Gronk in the third or Reed in the fourth? I'd probably take Reed in the fourth because I'd rather have a third round running back or wide receiver and pair him with Jordan Reed around later than, than spending the capital and having Gronk who has the question marks with a lesser wide receiver or running back. Yeah, man, that's that's tough for me. What about you, Andy? What are you going? Reed in the fourth or Gronk in the third? Gronk. Yeah, I would take Gronk in the third. All right, dynasty question. William in Memphis. I'm starting a dynasty league, and I was wondering what the best website y'all use to start dynasty leagues is. Looking for something user-friendly. Well, if you're looking you- for user-friendly, we run our dynasty league out of the ESPN platform. And I would consider them to be very user-friendly. Yeah. We are, uh, you know, there are some warts with some of the other systems out there in Not terms that of ESPN like, doesn't have their problems. no every every system has goods and bads but you're going to need to make it alongside your ESPN league if you're doing a dynasty you're going to need a doc 
some kind of spreadsheet you keep. Yeah, a Google spreadsheet or an Excel file or something. Right. Uh, and and so there there's that layer. Whereas other platforms My like fantasy my fantasy league. com, you w- you won't need anything extra. You could do everything on that platform, but ease of use is And you have to pay for it. Not there. Yeah. So we, yeah, for our league, ESPN and a doc on the side works great. It's very user friendly. I like it. Yeah, Maybe it, we'll get you that for lunch, you know. And you know, maybe a we doc can, on the side. <laughs> we can um, this this off season. We'll make sure to make a note. We'll take that doc that we use. I know we've done this in the past, and kind of make it serviceable for you to put in your own league, your own team names, all of that. And you can use that as a baseline to start your own dynasty leagues. We have that up right now over on jointhefoot.com. Um, that's in the threads, or I'm sorry, the the Footclan leagues. Footclan leagues dot com. Um, so if you're starting a, a dynasty league over inside of the foot clan leagues, uh, be sure to check out that doc. It's already in the forums. Here's a question from Danny in Orlando. How do you review the chargers wide receivers? So Keenan Allen, Tyrell Williams, Dontrell Inman for Oof. next year. And which ones do you think will be drafted too high? Which one will be value? Uh, thank you for keeping the confidence canoe afloat <laughs> the in the confidence canoe in the off season. I forgot about that. Um, Great question. You have Keenan Allen returning from injury. Tyrell Williams was in the top five for yards per reception, was a big play guy. He had a kind of a mediocre second half of the season for Phillip Rivers. He really didn't light up the scoreboard, but obviously he was missing some weapons. Melvin Gordon went down late. No no Woodhead in the beginning of the season. No Keenan Allen. And then Dontrell Inman, still young, still a physical freak. How do you break these three options down in, in, in a draft let me give you that example, Oof. right? Yeah. Keenan Allen in the, what, second round? Second, yeah. Tyra Williams in the seventh? Oh, that's, would, that's easily Tyra Williams for me. And I love Keenan Allen. That's uh, Okay, so that answers my question. But, Jason, do you have thoughts on these three uh, guys? My, mine are the exact same. I Keenan Allen is great, but you're talking about a guy who has never had 1,000 yards because of injury, who has been injured a lot to be a second-round pick. Um, for me, I would much rather have Tyrell Williams cheaper. He's also one of the things that people forget with Tyrell Williams because he wasn't this um, glamorous fantasy stud early. Like he he didn't come in to the NFL in the fantasy communities as a guy to keep your eye on. He's a freak. Like he is right. His numbers su- super fast. He's got good height and he's got the rapport. So Tyrell Williams to me is a guy I like um, quite a bit and. The reason not to like him is that he's got Keenan Allen coming to steal all those targets. But if Keenan Allen gets injured, the value on Tyrell Williams and and honestly, but what's I his value know. if Keenan doesn't get injured? I think it's still good. Okay, that's, that's my point question, because you've yeah. always had multiple wide receivers uh, f- with Philip Rivers be able to produce something for fantasy, and I think it's Tyrell Williams, not Dontrell Inman, and not uh, Travis Benjamin. And I'm and I'm not saying I'm opposed to Keenan Allen in the second round. I still like him. I think that he will be back. He went down, you know, extremely early with the ACL, so he should be back to to a full go. Well, you'll have to monitor how he's doing in training camp if he's already on the field. Get some preseason action in. I still love him, especially in the PPR league. But I think that Tyrell Williams could be undervalued. I th- I think I agree with Jason that people are going to they could overreact to the Keenan Allen target count, taking everything away from, from Williams. I think he can be a strong, you know, one of those wide receiver twos that get overlooked and great right. value Decker Hearns, that exactly. type of guy from a couple exactly. of years ago. Eric in Atlanta has a question. He says late round two in a snake draft. There are players like Rawls and Gronk Watkins and Ingram Ware, Gurley and Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas, who is the pick to get this hypothetical team off to a good start out of that bunch? Woo. Well, that it, it depends a lot on who you're taking earlier in the draft, obviously. If you have selected a top-line running back, Michael Thomas is very tempting to me here, as as is Sammy Watkins. So if not, if it, you know, if you went wide receiver in the first round and I had to pick between any of these running backs, I'm probably taking Todd Gurley myself. The but for me the pick it would be between Ingram Watkins and Michael Thomas as of as of right now I'm not looking at Rawls Gronk uh, Ware or even Gurley at at that point I would rather have Ingram than Gurley I was doing a mock draft 
just yesterday and, and this situation came up where I was in late in the second. I was choosing between Michael Thomas and Sammy Watkins and Ingram was still there. I took Thomas and then Ingram was available on the way back. I was like, because I don't know if I want to jump into that ship uh, <laughs> with, with Michael Thomas and Ingram. I know that the Saints offense can produce enough that you can have both of those guys and they can be a benefit. But do you want to jump into with a second and third, a wide receiver running back combo? Yeah, I, I, I can agree with really everything both you guys said. I think of the players listed here. Um, but would you, so would Gurley, you take Gurley? Three, uh, they'd all be in consideration. I Honestly, I think the guy that I might take who isn't even listed here, who's going later, so, I mean, he, he should be there, would be Carlos Hyde. In the second? I, I, I think Carlos Oh, I figured it would be Josh Doxson. <laughs> what? That's that's this guy. That's you hate you hate LeJean McCoy. Uh, no, but I'm just saying late, late second, you know, uh, uh, around that turn, early third, I think Carlos Hyde will perform. Interesting. Oh, Interesting. I, I love Carlos Hyde. In the, you always have. He's great. And in the Kyle Shanahan system. He can get hurt in that system, too. He can get hurt in any kind of system. Any Every system running back can get hurt. Not like Carlos. <laughs> John. <laughs> Some are a little bit better. At yeah. Hurt. John Pegborn has two great questions for us, guys. He says in snake drafts. Wait, was that Pigborn? No. No, it was okay. Pang oh, all right. Pangborn. We're, sorry. Sorry. We're talking about Black Mirror over in, here? Uh, in Boston, <laughs> where they eat uh, crowd air. Uh, in snake drafts, do you prefer to be at the beginning, middle, or end of the draft, and why? That, I like – oh, go ahead. No, no Well, I've, I've got – I mean, this is truly preference. This is not one is better. But for me, I prefer to be two or three picks away from the turn. First turn, second turn, I don't care. But the reason why is because I find for the way my brain works, I really like to be Just able – not well. Right? No, no, no. Sure. Right? But there's plenty of listeners out there that maybe their brain doesn't work well. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, what I really like to do is I like to have when I get uh, – when it's coming up to the turn, I like to have somewhere between two to six picks between my next pick. A short enough amount where I can really play that first pick right and say, look at, you know, two or three teams and say, okay, these guys already have running backs. I get they're not going to go with a running back, so I'm going to skip my running back and get the wide receiver because they're going to be going after that, and then that running back will fall to me. I just That's the strategy where, to this question, I, I prefer to be. I agree with your sentiment that there's not a right or wrong. I also believe that there is a year-to-year -year right or wrong most often. And Certainly. so – for me, this year, I want to be at the beginning. I want a shot at one of those prolific running backs. I want David Johnson, Zeke, or Le Le'Veon Bell. So, for me, I'm going to take my bona fide stud there. I'm going to lean on my draft prowess to grab something at the back of the second. And I'm with Jason. I like to be closer to the middle so you can play that game. as a, When you're on the edge, and not that it's it's bad or wrong, but when you're on the edge, you have to, you have to take your guy and much – earlier than than you probably want to because you know that you have so many picks i mean you're gonna have 20 picks or so in between you all right here's another question from him he said how do you guys make your rankings is it all based on feel or opinion is there an algorithm <laughs> there's well a, the, the, there's a lot that goes into it it's a, it's like a big funnel right at the top and you're dropping certain things in of different proportions and the rankings come out the bottom so there is an aspect that there is a feel and an opinion based on information, but there is a, a, a process that goes well beyond that with last year's statistics, previous year changes in coaching and free agency and film study. We, we try to take in, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to just go stats based. And there's a lot of people that just want to go film based. We try to take in the whole or gamut. just feel based, or right? Opinion. Or just feel based. We're certainly not the, we're, we're really try to be as, as, well-rounded as possible in that when we when it comes to our statting you know we have docs that we have made where we literally stat out every player for preseason for the for the season for every single week um we have certain algorithms in you know our back-end system when we're looking at guys that help us even even uh yesterday we were making improvements to how we stat guys for next season so that we can be at more accurate. I mean, we're always trying to achieve the most accurate rankings we can. And one one piece of the puzzle for the ultimate draft kit for all of our preseason rankings 
is that you get access to what we consider to be our risk rate. Yes. Our, our risk rating for each player. So how likely are they to perform up to expectation? Or are they a player that has higher risk, injury risk, risk with the offense, risk with a lot of change that has taken place in the offseason? Or are things kind of the same? You know, you got a guy like Le'Veon Bell. He comes back to Pittsburgh. It's going to be pretty much status quo to what they've been running. Whereas you have other situations where new head coaches, new offensive coordinators, new offensive lines come into play. I like my rankings robust. Robust. Like your coffee? I was going to say, like my coffee. There you go. All right. Yeah. I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> Amir Abdullah <laughs> question, guys. I Look. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Oh, I don't know. We were talking about Amir Abdullah. Sure. <laughs> I just didn't know if you were back on the train. So I want this question answered myself. Okay. Because I am in a dynasty league where I recently traded for Amir Abdullah. I have Theo Riddick. This, uh, this person, Adrian in Victoria, British Columbia. Bonjour. Says, I view the potential for Abdullah and Riddick <laughs> as a Freeman Coleman light. Are you guys on the Abdullah Express next year? Nope. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, uh, Abdullah and Riddick are to Freeman and Coleman oh, here what we go. flavored water is to Coca-Cola. It is not just light. We're talking very, very, very far No away. caloric value. There is no caloric value. <laughs> Uh, there's a little bit of flavor in that water. It's still so it's, fizzy. It's, it's not. It's not just water. It's still fizzy. Yeah. There's. But I, I'm telling. you. My, my he, daughter says bubbly. He didn't say sparkling. He just said flavor. Yeah. No. Oh, no. No. Okay, there was no fizz. No. Fizz. fizz. no still, please don't put that fizz in there. I like the fizz. Um. <laughs> here's the problem I have with Abdullah and Riddick, is that the running game for the Lions. That's not their forte. That's not what they're good at. That's not what this team is currently built for. Or it's not something they've been in succeeding any at for years. Whereas Atlanta, you you have a team that is uh, dominated by the run. I mean, Matt Ryan might have got the MVP because he was great in airing out those long passes this year, but that was all set up by the running game, and and so you don't have that right now in in Detroit. You've had Riddick come out and have a huge successful fantasy season on the back of reception totals, exactly eighty plus receptions. You haven't had. I mean, I don't see these as comparable. I really don't. I mean, Tevin Coleman isn't doesn't come in as a passing down back and dominate the you know dominate the catch totals compared to Freeman. It's just it's nice to think about. Abdullah has a ton of talent, but he hasn't stayed on the field. Neither is Theo Riddick. Abdullah or Coleman? Coleman. Yeah, I'll take Coleman. I mean, are you? It was only two games, so incredibly small sample size. Let granted, me, but do you remember you how good Abdullah was? He was okay. He was. It was very limited. I mean, yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. It was very, very limited. But it was. I, mean, I, I, I don't think you remember how good Amir Abdullah was. I yeah. Did the game against the Colts? He was 12 for 63 on the ground and five for 57 through the air. I mean, he was. He was yeah, solid. That, that's, sure. That's, for that's you, you did. Yes, it's one game. I yeah. that, I I prefaced the argument, but I'm saying, he just I don't give up on Amir Abdullah yet. That's okay. what I'm saying. All right. Well, so in my dynasty league, how many of my starts next year? Let's say I had to start. Oh, great question. Uh, Abdullah or Riddick for 16 games in one spot. How many times is, am I starting Abdullah? And how many times am I starting Riddick? And how many times am I trying to sign Zach Zinner? <laughs> <laughs> you're starting uh, Theo Riddick for 10 of those. You're you're starting Abdullah for four of those. All right. So I guess that leaves two for Zinner. All right. Uh, All right. Here's a question, right. guys, from Gavin Sam off of Twitter. Which rookie running backs or wide receivers will you be most excited about this upcoming season? Where do you hope they will go? Uh, That's a fun question. Yeah, some of that is is in process right now. Yeah. We're projecting some of those guys to different teams. You know, I, I obviously see Fournette as an option for Carolina. I know Jason thinks Dalvin Cook will go there at number eight. Didn't you say that? Nope. Okay. Well, number eight in the draft to me is a running back opportunity for, I think it'll be Fournette, and I think it'll go to Carolina, and I think I'll have the opportunity to succeed. That team needs to stabilize the running game. Jonathan Stewart is too injury prone. I That's one of my kind of locked and loaded running back positions in the draft. One of the guys that I'm looking forward to for fantasy more than most is actually Joe Mixon. Um, his tape is incredible, but what's going to happen with Joe Mixon because he Aye. had troubles coming into college uh, with uh, domestic yes. violence. Yeah, troubles. Yeah, no good. 
Um, he is rightfully banned from the uh, NFL Combine, which is going to hurt his draft stock. But the thing is, is when guys tumble in the draft, it's good very teams. common that they go to good teams. Yeah. Exactly right. And if there's a good team that needs a good running back, Joe Mixon was a five-star recruit at a high school. You watch his film, and when I watch it, you know, I see a guy that has patience, vision, size, strength. It has the whole package. So when it comes to fantasy football, he's not going to be the guy. He's not going to be the Leonard Fournette or the Dalvin Cook that's being drafted super high. But he's a guy that if he goes to the right team, Joe Mixon me, is is an early look for. You if, could, if I'm doing an MFL 10 right now, I'm drafting Joe Mixon late. Here's a question I have for you guys. And I don't know if it's been brought up. You know, obviously, Jamal Charles, he may not be back. Right. Spencer Ware... He certainly wore down, and I don't think Char West is is all that special. Is there a potential for Kansas City? You talk about one of those teams, very good team. You know what they did when Charles was healthy. Is there a potential for them to draft a running back and work him into that rotation? Heck yeah! <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, goodness, that was uh, Andy Reid has successful running backs. I mean, this is the thing, like, we're going to be looking at coaching changes, you know, in a couple of weeks here because coaches matter so much in the NFL. Andy Reid has had a long history of having successful running backs. And honestly, I don't think Spencer wears that good. And he's still been pretty successful. So for me, if they can go out and get a really good, talented running back, I'm going to be excited. That's going to be one of those teams. Are you that, fixing for a mixing? <laughs> yeah, ooh, Joe Mixon there? Heck yeah. <laughs> it's, assuming... Jamal Charles uh, leaves. If Jamal Charles stays and they draft someone, the waters will be muddy. And this is a, it's a little sneak peek for we're, we're going to be talking free agents on Tuesday. But they t a team that I think possibly could uh, spend one of their picks because they have two first round picks early, and people might barf if one of these top running backs go there. But I Cleveland? will I will not. Is the Cleveland Browns. Isaiah Crowell is a restricted free agent. They may let him go. Duke Johnson's not a frontline running back. Crowell was very solid. Yes. Was very Hugh solid. Jackson. The, and Hugh Jackson has a great system. Jason talked about coaches. Hugh Jackson knows how to get production out of a running back. If you go give me a guy like Leonard Fournette going to the Cleveland Browns, I think most people will go, no, and I will, I will sit here in the shadows rubbing my hands together going, ooh. What if you – ooh. I mean, you might – it's it's a very decent possibility you could have one of those rookie running backs in Garoppolo behind center. Yeah, in that's Cleveland. Possible. And there's going to be a, there's some other free agents who I won't bring them up right now, but if they go to Cleveland, I'll be excited as well. All right, that is it for today's show. I do want to remind you, I mean, Mike just brought it up, the free agent preview show coming up soon. We'll talk coaching changes very soon. Don't forget this offseason off season also brings a lot of our strategy-based episodes where we give you – you know, top 10 tips for your fantasy football team. We'll renovate and put some of those uh, shows out there. Lots going on, mock drafts and rookies and more mailbag. And, I mean, it's going to be fun. And then we'll have the big announcement for the Ultimate Draft Kit here very soon. Very so, soon. You guys have any parting words before we take off? Go subscribe on YouTube. We got more action over there coming up right now, yeah, show you, after the show. If you missed Tuesday's show after the show, you it should go. It was pretty funny. You should go back and check that out. And thanks to Fantasy Jocks. Go get your fantasy trophies there. The code is FOOTBALLERS. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.